can never tell if I'm live or not on this thing. If you guys can hear me and see me, let me know because my internet sometimes does wonky things and I want to make sure that you can see me and hear me. Good morning. Um, it is Monday. I hope that you all have a cup of coffee because it is one of the Mondays, Mondays around here. <laughs> um, I have my coffee mug from free. Well, oh, it says Timber Creek Farm, free range yarn. Janet is a speaker at the HOA conference and she also has a really awesome yarn business and she's a sponsor of the HOA conference. So make sure you check her out. She has really super pretty mugs too. If you want some fun new coffee mugs. All right. We are on week eight of our garden tour series. And we have a giveaway today and I want to talk a little bit about, um, planting. I've had a lot of people just not got the notification that I went live. So we're going to probably repeat all of this in just a second. But um, I have a lot of people asking about if, if they still have time to plant right now. So we're going to talk about that for a few minutes. Um, as, as you come in, let me know where you're from. We, we always love seeing where you guys are from, what you're doing, what you're planning on doing. Um, that's always fun to kind of connect with you guys here. And then um, I'm going to show you what we're giving away this week. It's probably not something you've ever heard of, though some of you may have heard of it. We are giving away, um, as long as I can find it on Amazon. <laughs> there was only one copy left on Amazon. Um, but I think you guys are going to love this book. This is called Growing Tomorrow. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this in a second. Um, it's from Forrest Pritchard. He's the same author of the book Gaining Ground, but I'm not giving away this one. <laughs> okay. All right. So as everybody's coming in, let me know where you're from, what you're doing, what you're growing. If you're not growing anything, tell us that too, because we want to know. Um, so this is week eight, like I said, of the Homestead Garden Tour series. And I got to do my little speech about the Garden Tour series because we always have new people that are joining us that don't know what it is. So the Garden Tour series um, is an extension of our series. We did, we did How to Grow Your Own Food series. So it's an extension of that. When in March, when the um, pandemic first started happening, a lot of people wanted to grow their own food. And so we tried to help people out. Um, by doing a series on that. So the garden tour series is an extension of that because the best way to learn how to garden is to watch somebody else garden. Um, a lot of people did not have um, the interest, you know, in watching their parents or grandparents garden when they were younger, or they didn't have grandparents and parents that gardened when they were younger. So you can watch people garden. You can watch what they're doing, learn a few things from them is the kind of the goal behind um, the Garden Tour series. And as I mentioned in the beginning, for those few people who were here in the beginning, we are also going to talk about um, some things that you can plant now. It's not too late to plant. You'll just be getting a fall harvest instead of a summer harvest uh, in some most cases. Um, and we do have a giveaway of this book that I do want to talk to you about in just a second. So... All right, let's see what we have this morning. We have New Mexico, Georgia, Houston, Louisiana, Michigan. We have people from all over the place every single week. It's amazing. California. Good morning, Kilsey Gardner. All right, ginger peach vintage is growing cauliflower, potatoes, beets, carrots. Um, Oregon. Seeds in the ground have molded. Oh, that's a bummer. That is always a bummer when your seeds in the ground mold or do not germinate. I am dealing with that right now with my beans, but my beans were actually a little bit older than they should have been. So I think I'm just going to have to replant them, which is fine because I planted the wrong beans anyhow. <laughs> so of what I wanted to, to grow this year. Um, so it's just, you know, you just try again. Um, let's see, Virginia, Oklahoma City, really wanting to do a fall harvest. We live in a small space, so we are doing mainly container gardening. Okay, so it's funny that you guys are talking about rain because it seems like um, a lot of people are dealing with rain this year. And 
that can be a killer for your garden, believe it or not. Like I know that gardens love water, but um, you can actually have stuff rot in the ground. Like someone had mentioned, uh, tomatoes hate really wet spaces. Um, so a lot of tomatoes will not do very well in, in a very rainy area. Um, my friend, Ann, she lives in the Pacific Northwest and she's having to cover her tomatoes because they're getting so much rain that her tomatoes just are not doing well at all. So we've had years like that. <clears throat> um, believe it or not here in Virginia, we've had years, uh, I guess it was maybe three years ago, uh, maybe four years ago now, we had like a 100 year flood all summer long. And um, it was very difficult to garden. And I lost almost all of our tomato plants that year. And it was just horrible. It was horrible. There's really no way around it unless you cover everything. Um, and that's almost impossible when you have a big garden. So, and then a lot of you are saying you don't have any rain that you're kind of in a drought situation. So that's tough. That is a tough part of gardening. Um, the one thing that I'm discovering is I don't know if you guys who don't have rain a lot, um, it, I need, I need to do a video on this. They're called Oya's. And it's probably not practical for um, people who have extremely, extremely large gardens, but it could help out with certain water loving plants, uh, maybe not doing it in your, in your entire garden. But um, so Oya's, I can't, how are they spelled? It's like, oh, A-J-A-S or something like that. I don't know. I'll try to link it in the comments when the video is done. Um, basically, it is. It's like a pot that you put into the ground and you fill it with water and it has a tap on it. And what happens is um, the roots of the plants, they will go towards the pot with, uh, with water. It's like a pottery. It's like a, um, help me out here, people. What are those? It's like a terracotta pot. That's what it is. Um, and so the terracotta pot seeps water slowly into the ground. And so, yes, terracotta, that's what it was. Um, so my dad had actually mentioned this to me, uh, not the Oya, but he used to do something similar um, here in Virginia where he would take, they would collect tin cans and um, like soup cans and baked bean cans. And they would poke tiny, tiny holes in the bottom of it. And they would fill, they would plant things in circles. So like they would plant melons in circles, especially um, because they love water. And in the middle of that circle, they would put one of these tin cans or an Oya and they would fill it with water, put the top back on and the roots of the melons would go to the center of the circle. And that's really the best way to do it. Like if you're doing rows, it's very hard to use Oyas. So that's something you know, hindsight is twenty twenty because none of y'all probably like just randomly planted your stuff in circles. But um, it's something to think about for years, you know, years to come because, I, you know, that might be something. We have years here, too, where, where we have no rain. So um, that might be something to think about. But there are uh, YouTube videos where you can make them out of terracotta pots, uh, too. So if I ever get around to planting melons this year, which... I'm a little bit behind on. Um, I might do it that way, but we'll see. All right. So let's talk about planting right now, because a lot of people are jumping into the garden series and they're like, well, <laughs> you know, I don't have time to plant anything because y'all planted in like March, right? So you actually do still have time to plant. You would just get a fall garden instead of a um, summer garden. And I'm really sorry that my lighting keeps going in and out. So um, depending on your area, you know, like people in Michigan are just now planning a lot of things. And um, so it depends on your area as to what you're going to plant. But I want to caution you, uh, you know, planting things like tomatoes and peppers unless they're already very large um, in the pot because tomatoes are not just something that grow um, with the heat. Tomatoes actually grow with the sunlight as well. So if they're not getting enough sunlight, they're not going to grow efficiently. So you all know we just reached the first day of summer 
Um, and so now the days are growing shorter. So when you're planning on your fall garden, just keep that in mind because there are certain plants, you know, a lot of us think, oh, we're just going to throw some seeds in the ground or put these plants in the ground and it's hot outside. So they're going to do great. And that's fine. But, um, it's just really depending on your location is as to what you want to plant, but you can start planting things now for fall, like broccoli and cabbage and um, Brussels sprouts and a lot of things that you would have planted in early spring. So um, in order to get an October, November harvest, now it's time to think about those things. Um, you can even do another batch of potatoes. You can do another batch of carrots. Uh, a lot of people are starting carrots right now. Um, and then again, in the fall, you're going to plant some stuff too. So in the fall, you're going to plant things like garlic and things that can overwinter really well. So I want to encourage you that if you're watching this garden series um, and you're like, man, I really wish I should have, you know, would have planted that. You still have time to plant a lot of these things. You're just not going to be harvesting when everybody else is harvesting them necessarily in the summertime, but you will get a fall harvest. So definitely learn your zone. Like Ginger Peach said, just learning my zone was a game changer. Yes. Learn your zone. Learn um, how each plant works. I mean, like I said, gardening is truly watching and learning and it'll take years. I mean, I tell people the first three years of your garden are going to probably just be the greatest learning experience ever. Um, and you're going to have a lot of failures, uh, but you're going to have a lot of successes too, as you learn. So those are, that's my encouragement to you this week. Now, let me get on to the collaborators this week because they might have some more inspiring things for you. And then we are going to get on to, I want to talk about this book that we're going to give away this week. Okay. So let me pull up my collaborators here. Uh, Jen Briggs said, I found this really cool app the other day. It's called From Seed to Spoon. And for some beginners with vegetable, I think, it, oh, hey, I'm going to have to check that out. So those of you just starting might want to check that app out too. Okay. So this week's collaborators, I'm going to call out Life on Beagle Road right now <laughs> because they were supposed to be a collaborator this week. And I still want to give them a shout out because she let me know uh, over the weekend that they were not going to have a video ready today. So I still want you guys to go over and check out their channel because they had some issues this weekend with their goats getting out. And um, so they'll probably have a video up sometime this week. It just won't be part of the garden tour series. But I imagine it'll probably be about their goats getting out. So definitely go check them out. All right. For this week's collaborators, we have four. Um, Venison for Dinner is back with us this week. As you guys know, she's way, way, way up north. She's in Canada. So um, those of you that are up near that way, definitely check her out. Um, she's really just getting started with things. It's crazy. I love watching videos from people that are in much different climates than me because um, – Believe it or not, you can still learn something from them, even if you're in the, the Midwest or the South or the East Coast. It doesn't matter. Um, climates are constantly changing, so it's good to pay attention to different climates. Um, Cosmopolitan Cornbread is with us again this week. She has, I think she's going to have a pretty funny video this week. She was talking in our collaboration group that she got interrupted, surprisingly, for her garden tour. <laughs> so you guys are going to watch that. Um, Urban Overalls, she is in Colorado. She's also one of our conference speakers. And then So the Land is with us this week um, again. And they are in North Carolina. And so they are showing us their garden. So you guys, I want you guys to go check out those four channels and if you want to be part of this week's giveaway, which I'm going to talk about more in a second, the rules are that you have to watch the videos or at least one. Uh, but the more you watch and comment, the more entries you get. And that has actually proven to work because the past two people that have won have commented multiple times. They watched every video. They left one comment for each video that they watched on this video saying, um, so the rules are, go watch the collaborators. Each video that you watch, come back and leave a comment about what you learned from it, what inspired you about it. Um, and um, so if you come back and leave a comment for each one, then you get more entries. If you share it and come back and let you know that you shared their video or this video, you get more entries. So, um, 
Katie says, I, uh, no, not Katie. Uh, I watch my veggies every day. It doesn't look like they're growing. They're the same height. I planted them last week. Should I be patient? Yes, you should be patient. Um, because if you just planted them, it can take about two weeks for them to root very well. And then they'll start really growing after that. So just, um, just keep an eye on them over the next month and they'll be okay. All right. So did you guys get the rules? If not, the rules are in the description of this video. We're talking about this book today. This book is wonderful. You guys probably have not heard about this. If you have, I want you to throw up a hand because I would be very surprised if many people have heard about this. Um, this book is called Growing Tomorrow and it is written by Forrest Pritchard. And um, Forrest is here. He's local in Virginia. He's not too far from me actually. And he wrote this memoir called Gaining Ground. This book you may have heard of. Um, this is kind of big in the farming community. Or maybe it's just me because he lives here. I don't know. But this is a really good book. I'm not giving away this book today. But um, this book, yes, if you've won before, you can enter again. Um, this book is great. This book is a memoir of him, you know, going to college, taking back the family farm and completely changing it into a sustainable agriculture farm and the issues he had to go through that. So this is good. But we're not giving away that book today because I'm not even quite sure if I can find that on Amazon. This book as long as I can find it on Amazon. If not, I will send you my personal copy. Um, this is called Growing Tomorrow, and it's behind the scenes with 18 extraordinary sustainable farmers who are changing the way we eat. So this is actually... Um, sorry, my babysitter is not doing his job. Um, so what happened was Forrest and his photographer, Molly, who is also local, um, they traveled the United States and went to different farms and um, documented that. But it's also a cookbook. So um, they go through, let me show you. They go through and they visit these farms and they kind of uh, put like little interviews and information in there with them. Um, and then they go through and they give you recipes um, which is really, really fun. All right, so here's an example. So this is Nichols Farm and Orchard. And um, this is in Illinois. So he goes through and he tells the story of the farm. See? Gives pictures, information, which I really love because I love learning about other farms. And then he adds in some of their favorite recipes. This is from the farm. So like here's homemade pasta and lavender and lemon balm mint tea. Oh, that sounds delicious right now. Um, that's not actually from that farm, but, and then he goes into the next farm. And so each farm just has, you know, a set of people, a set of, um, recipes and it's really just documenting their stories and like I love this this is Texas honeybee gum it has pictures and then it goes through and you know um let's see where's the recipes here look it's honey orange drumsticks yes please so hey I can see you in your underwear go mm -hmm children. So today we are giving this book away, the Growing Tomorrow book. So you have until Friday um, to enter. And the way that you enter is in the rules in the description. You go through, you watch the collaborators, you come back and leave a comment for each um, person that you watched. Let us know what you learned, what inspired you. And um, if you share, leave a comment as well and interact on their videos because they, they really enjoy that. It's, it is encouraging to them. Let me go through these. Brand new to your live stream. Is there a place I can read about how to join you all? In? Yep. All that information is in the description. Um, doo -doo 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 okay. Um, also, the playlists for the How to Grow Your Own Food series and for the Garden Tour series are also in the description. So, all right, guys, here's your giveaway for the week. Um, you have until Friday. We will pick a winner on Friday morning and um, you can grow food. 
it's not too late. So I hope that you guys have a great week. And um, I hope you guys have fun trying to get this book. And if you want another good book to read, maybe eventually if I can find an extra one, um, we'll give away this book to you. If you like reading, this is a really good memoir. Um, I remind you of a younger you with those kids. Yeah. Woo. Boys or something. They keep you on your toes. All right, guys. Well, that is it. Monday morning coffee with you is always fun. I hope that you have a great week. I hope for those of you who are drowning in rain, get some breaks this week. I know how tough that is. And for those of you who need rain, I hope you get it this week. If not, check out those Oyas because those are really, really cool. Uh, all right, guys, have a great day. Have a great week and happy homesteading.